Hey guys, my name is Chloe, Grace, and Pablo. And this video is sponsored by Green Growth. Today, we are going to discuss the concepts of photosynthesis, the ultimate light snacking. Let's begin. Photosynthesis is broken down into two words, photo, light, and synthesize, make. This is a general process in which green plants along with other organisms use sunlight to synthesize molecules like carbon dioxide and water to produce products like glucose and oxygen. It follows the equation 6 carbon dioxide plus 6 water equals 1 glucose and 6 oxygen. Now to know the processes, we need to define and review certain terms. First off, light. Specifically, visible light energy is a primary ingredient in photosynthesis. It travels in waves called photons, which are small units of energy. Chloroplast, usually found in the palisade mesophyll layer at the top of a leaf. It is a membrane-bound organelle in green plants and, and algal cells that carries photosynthesis and contains chlorophyll. Chlorophyll, also known as chlorophyll A, a green-colored pigment that absorbs light. Accessory pigments. These are also known as light-absorbing compounds, working in conjunction with chlorophyll A. These may come in other pigments such as chlorophyll B and beta-carotene. Thylakoid, sac-like membrane, each of a stack inside a chloroplast, including chlorophyll. In chloroplasts, they are arranged in stacks called grana. Granum, a single stack of thylakoids. Grana, all the granum put together. Stroma, a space between the inner chloroplast membrane and the grana where the Calvin cycle takes place. Inner membrane forms a border to the stroma. It regulates passage of materials in and out of the chloroplast. Outer membrane, it is a semi-porous membrane permeable to small molecules. ATP, adenosine triphosphate, principal energy supply molecule for cellular function in all cells, formed by ADP plus P. NADPH, which is nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide phosphate, is an electron donor involved in energy transfers. Oxidation, it is a reaction in which an atom or molecule loses electrons. This is mathematically equated as one hydrogen atom is equals to one hydrogen ion plus one electron. Reduction. This is a reaction in which an atom or molecule gains electrons. This is mathematically equated as one hydrogen ion plus one electron equals to one hydrogen atom. There are two main steps on the ultimate light snacking process. One, light-dependent reactions, aka non-cyclic photophosphorylation or non-cyclic electron flow that occur only on daylight where an energy from the sun is captured in energy-carrying molecules. In the light-dependent reactions, light and water enters the chloroplast and alongside with NADP plus and ADP plus P goes inside the thylakoid membranes and releases hydrogen ions NADPH, ATP, and oxygen as a byproduct. 2. Light Independent Reactions Light independent reactions start 24 hour reactions, aka carbon fixation reactions, or the Calvin cycle discovered by Calvin and Benson, used to fix the carbon from atmospheric carbon dioxide into organic compounds. In the light independent reactions, or Calvin cycle, CO2 alongside with ATP and NADPH that the light dependent reactions released enters in this process, cycles in the stroma, and releases NADP, ADP plus P, and G3P that further secretes sugar such as cellulose, starch, and other organic compounds commonly used in cellular respiration. So now let's dig deeper into the light dependent reactions. There are two photosystems involved in this process, photosystem 2 and photosystem 1. For the photosystem 2 to work, it mainly needs light and water. First, light enters the chlorophyll pigments and excites electrons which then leave the photosystem 2. At the same time, an enzyme breaks the water molecule apart in a process called photolysis, which is mathematically shown as H2O equals 2 hydrogen ions one half oxygen molecule and two electrons. Because of this, oxygen is released and hydrogen ions begins to build up inside the thylakoid disc, while the electrons from the water molecule replace the electrons that leave from photosystem 2 
through electron transfer chain which is made out of proteins. The electrons exit photosystem 2 and enters to photosystem 1. By the time it enters photosystem 1, these electrons are weakened because they have been used up in the thylakoid membrane to pump hydrogen ions in the lumen. Light strikes the chlorophyll pigments in photosystem 1 and excites the electrons that will be used together with one hydrogen ion and NADP plus from Calvin cycle informing NADPH. At the same time, the electrons from electron transfer chains will replace the ones that left the photosystem 1. And going back to photolysis, after water is broken down into two hydrogen ions, protons proceeds to the ATP synthase channel alongside with other hydrogen ions that have been inside the thylakoid membrane as well. The protons provide the necessary energy to join the ADP molecule and the phosphate in order to form ATP, which will be used in the Calvin cycle. This process is called chemiosmosis. Now, we are going to talk about the Calvin cycle aka the dark reactions that occur in the stroma. Step 1. Carbon fixation. This phase begins when a carbon dioxide molecule is attached to a 5-carbon sugar, also known as a ribulose biphosphate, or RUBP. This reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme called Rubisco, one of the most abundant proteins on Earth. The products of this reaction is an unstable 6-carbon compound that immediately splits into two molecules of triphosphoglycerate. For every three molecules of carbon dioxide that enter the cycle via the Rubisco, three RUBP molecules are carboxylated forming six molecules of triphosphoglycerate. Step 2. Reduction this reduction phase is a two-step process that couples ATP hydrolysis with the reduction of triphosphoglycerate to glyceraldehyde phosphate. An enzyme adds a phosphate to G3P by transferring a phosphate from the ATP. Electrons from the NADPH reduce the carboxyl group of the G3P to become stable. For every three carbon dioxide molecules that enter the Calvin cycle, six G3P are produced. Only one of them can be counted as a net gain. The other five are used to regenerate three molecules of RUBP. Step 3. Regeneration of RUBP. A complex series of reactions rearranges the carbon skeletons of five G3P molecules into three RUBP molecules. These reactions require three ATP molecules. RUBP is thus regenerated to begin the cycle again. Overall, photosynthesis converts inorganic raw materials into food that provides our ecosystem with energy. It also helps in providing oxygen in the atmosphere required by all living organisms. It also provides green plants which in turn provides organic food to all the animals. In fact, any food chain traced back to its original source will always begin with a plant. Without plants and their ability to make their own food through a process called photosynthesis, life would cease to exist. So there you have it folks, photosynthesis. See you next time. Bye! Bye.